at North Bethesda United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Kara, and we are so glad to be in worship with you on this World Communion Sunday, a day where we remember that we are gathering from south to north and from west to east to celebrate and praise our God of peace who accompanies us in all of our acts of peace. So in the name of that God, we are all most welcome. There are some announcements on the back of your bulletin that share some of the things that are happening in the life of our church. You'll see that our youth group is off and running. They'll be meeting today at Faith United Methodist Church from 5 to 7 p.m. Next week, they'll be here at North Bethesda, and they will continue every Sunday from 5 to 7. You'll also see that we are packing care packages for our college students in the fellowship hall following worship today. Invite you to stop by and hope to fill a box and maybe write a note of encouragement. Even if you don't know the person, it's good to receive a note that says that they are loved and someone is thinking about them here at North Bethesda. So I invite you to join us for that. You can see on the back of your bulletin other things that are happening and know that you're invited to plug in to take part. Whether this is your first Sunday here or you've been here a long time, we are so glad to be the church with you. I'm going to invite you now. Oh, one more thing. Uh, there's, I've changed the order in the bulletin just so you have a heads up. The word for all ages is going to come after we welcome our new members because I want our everyone to be able to welcome our new members together. And so if you're a new member, know that you're going to be, you're on deck. You're going to be called up to join, join with us um, after this, after our opening hymn. So it's just a heads up. But now I invite you to rise in body or spirit as uh, we join in our call to worship led by our liturgist joy. Great to see everyone here this morning on this beautiful day. Can you hear me now? Okay. It's great to see everyone here on this beautiful morning. North Bethesda has always been an open and welcoming church to everyone. I wanted to mention this as the theme of the call to worship is God created everything and loves all people. Please rise and we'll have respond with a bold print. Creator of all things, we pray this, of earth and sky and seas and stars and all living beings. We Loving mother and father, of all people, nations, and races. Be you whose arms hold 
Koreans and Bolivians, Rwandans and Anuit, for Baptists and Orthodox, Methodist, Moravian, Congregation, and Coptic. Yes. With all your beloved, we gather at your table to feast with our siblings in Christ, one in the body of Christ, one in your love. Yes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our opening hymn is Santo, 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 number 65 in the hymnal. That's in Spanish. You'll notice on the opposite page, number 64, words are in English. So take your pick, but we'll join together in singing. seated and I invite those who will become becoming new members today as well as those who have volunteered to act as their sponsors to come and join me in the front as we welcome our new members. I have words printed for all of you. Don't be worried. Our new members class has met three times over the course of the fall. We talked about, first we talked about our own spiritual journeys and where we had been and come from and where God had called us so far. We shared about what it means to be a Christian in general, the history of the church, what it specifically means to be United Methodist, and how we are the body of Christ at this specific congregation, North Bethesda United Methodist Church. I'm looking for some responses for you. If you turn to page 40 in your hymnal, you will see some bold words there at the bottom of page 40, and that will be your first response in just a minute. 
But before we move on, we want to know who will be joining us. So I've invited the sponsors to just say the name of the person you are welcoming. I'm recommending Anita Danil. Welcome, Anita. I'm welcoming Zach Elkin. Welcome, Zach. I'm welcoming Amy Guinness. Welcome, Amy. I'm welcome, Luis, welcoming Luisa Reboredo. Welcome, Luisa. And I'm welcoming Bruce Johnson. Welcome, Bruce. We, the members and friends of North Bethesda United Methodist Church, believe that each person is of sacred worth. In response to Jesus' teachings of, ra of radical hospitality toward all, we welcome and affirm all people, regardless of age, race, gender, ethnic background, sexual orientation, physical appearance, physical or mental disabilities, socioeconomic status, educational background or marital status, into full participation in the life and ministry of NBUMC. We commit ourselves to being inclusive of all who seek to join us in a faith community reflective of God's love for all. Siblings in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. These next four questions reflect promises made at our baptism and give us the opportunity to remember and affirm our renunciation of sin and our profession of faith. I'm going to move where I don't have as much feedback. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. According to the grace given you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say, I will. And these are for our sponsors who just introduced your people. Will you who sponsor these candidates support and encourage them in the Christian life? If so, say, I will. And you. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. And here's the question coming with the bold print on page 40. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons before you now in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may become true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. My bad for taking us off course. Those who are joining the United Methodist Church, as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church? Do all in your power to strengthen its ministries. If so, say, I will. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. Now, members of the household of God, we're turning one page over to page 43. In the middle, you'll see number 16, and I'll stay with you this time. Members of the household of God, we commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, 
confirm their hope and perfect them in love, we respond. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, the God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Will you join me again as we welcome Bruce and Louisa and Amy and Zach and Anita into our congregation. We will, we will sing our welcome to you as is our custom to sing our song of welcome. It's in the green book. As our new members return to their seats and their sponsors, we will welcome them with number 3152. Amen. I would like to invite the children or young people or anyone who wants, there's a small collection of items up here at the altar today. And so if you want to come forward and look at these with me, I also have a globe for us to explore. So come on up. There are a couple steps. If we need some help with steps, we've got some helpers ready.
It's good to see you. Welcome to church. Here come our friends. I've got my globe today, and I've got some things on this altar that different people gave me, or some that I got myself from different parts of the world. And I have my globe here so we can see where some of those things came from. Welcome. Do you want to come see what's up at this table? Let's see. This, this guy, he's from Mozambique, which is right here. Do you want to hold this one? Or do you want to hold this one? You want to hold my little dude from Mozambique? Oh, you don't have to. That's okay. This one, this one is from the Dominican Republic, which is, can we find it here? See where Dominican Republic is? It's half of an island here. And this wooden jar is from the other part of that island. That's from Haiti. Anything else you see up here that you wonder where it might have come from? That egg? That egg came from Russia over here. And that piece in the back, that came from South Africa. This fan over here came from a country called Burkina Faso, and that is also in Africa. That is more over this way. And we have a stone from Scotland, and we have an oil lamp, and the oil lamp is from a country called Jordan. I think we got them all, didn't we? So today, oh, we missed this guy. This little guy, that's from a, a nativity scene. Have you seen one of those before? That one is from Costa Rica. Got to find my, there we go, my Central America, there we go, Costa Rica. So today we're remembering that God's church isn't just these people in our church right now, and it's not even just those people who are on Zoom with Mr. Brandon and Miss Tina. God's church is all over this world. And there are people who are praying for us from places on every part of this globe. And we are also going to pray for them. So this is our, we're going to do our prayers of the people all together. And we're going to see if anybody in the congregation can name a place that you would like us to pray for. Would you carry the globe? And we can take some of our items down if you want to hold them while we pray. You don't want the feather guy, that's right. Do you want this jar or do you want the feather guy? Take the fan. Go for it. You want this jar? Okay. You can take any one that you want. Anybody else want to carry something down? And we'll ask our congregation what we're praying for. Does your sister want this one? Okay. So, church, who are we praying for today? Where on this globe are we taking our prayers? You can walk with me because we can't totally hear them from all the way up here. Anybody have a place on this globe you want to pray for? You, Ukraine. Ukraine. Thank you, Gordon. Asheville, North Carolina. Lebanon. Lebanon. Palestine. Sudan. Haiti. Myanmar. Zimbabwe. I did it. Israel. Sudan. So let's hold our items together and we can kind of huddle around this globe. And I'm going to say a prayer and our whole church is praying with us. And people who live in all these places are praying with us too. So can we pray? From every place on this planet, God, we ask that you would bind us in your love as this church together. Strengthen us through the grace of your people gathered no matter how we gather. In a world asking to be made new, we pray for those who are hurting, for places where there is fighting. We pray for people who might be sick or hungry, and we ask God for peace at all times. As we pray for this world, God, we celebrate with those who are making efforts with you to make the world new. We celebrate with all who are seeking your transforming work in the world. Make us into a world that grows into the shape of your communion table, 
where all are welcomed and all are fed. May we be found to be people who belong to each other and people who belong to you, O oh God. We pray with hope in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to go with Mitsitsi to crime time, you can do that. We can make a little place for our items right here. You can leave those there. Thank you so much for praying and being part of our World Communion Sunday. As we continue to pray, one of the places that was named was Asheville, North Carolina. And as we pray, we also have an opportunity to act and to give. And so Joy is going to share about UMCOR. UMCOR. Anybody know what that stands for? United Methodist Committee on Relief. It was begun in the 1940s to help Europe recover after the war. And today it is the way that United Methodists help people in disasters all over the world. One of the things that's nice about UMCOR is as soon as volunteers are allowed in, which is not the very first day, UMCOR is there and they stay till the end, till the disaster has been resolved or as much as they can be done. So I would like to invite you to dig deep into your hearts and make an additional contribution today for UMCOR and UMCOR's work, because they work not only in the US, but any place in the world where there is a disaster. So how can you give? Well, you can pull out your, uh, computer, uh, your cell phone and make a donation online. You can do something really weird and write a check and something even weirder, you can look in your wallet and find the largest bill that you have, which is probably nothing at all. If you're like me, you don't carry money anymore. But if you want to give through the church, just make a check out, uh, a check payable to the church, but mark on the line for UMCOR disaster relief. Uh, it's something I'm passionate about. My mother was an UMCOR re uh, disaster response coordinator for almost a decade. Uh, folks, UMCOR does awesome work, highly respected, highly respected by Red Cross and, and all kinds of first responders. So give your heart to God by loving and serving neighbor through UMCOR. Thank you. Was that passionate enough? That was great. Thank you, Joy. We prepare to give our hearts and our gifts to God through this, this morning's offering. Our choir has an offering in song, and I've invited Simone to share just a bit about what this song uh, means to him. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, as some of you might know, I'm from a small, very small village in Quebec, in Canada. And uh, one of the very, I, I'm not from a musical family, but music was important in my, in my family. My piano teacher was, was the church organist, and of course I was forced to join the choir. I didn't want to, but my mom was in the choir, my grandmother was in the choir, so I had to join the choir. And the first thing I ever sang was what we're, this, what we're about to sing. It's in French, I'm not gonna translate it for you, but the, the message is quite simple. Uh, it, it, the message is that God is in everything and in everybody. The title actually means He makes the world dance. Uh, so, and I have a special thought for my mom who passed away uh, several years ago. Today would be her 77th uh, birthday. So, here we go. Il fait danser monde. The melody is by Bach. And uh, yeah, please enjoy.
I invite you to rise in body or spirit. Our doxology is number 2226 in the paperback black hymnal, The Faith We Sing. of mercy and God of abundance, we pray that you would bless these gifts that have been given out of love and out of gratitude, and that you would send them into the world, far into the world, to make real your love, your hope, and your healing. We pray your blessing on these gifts and on our lives. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. You may be seated for our scripture reading. This morning, the scripture reading is Luke 5, 18 to 26, and I'll be reading from the Good News Bible. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a bed, and they tried to carry him into the house and put him in front of Jesus. Because of the crowd, however, they could find no way to take him in. So they carried him up on the roof, made an opening in the tiles, and let him down on his bed into the middle of the group in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw how much faith they had, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven, my friend. The teachers and the law and the Pharisees began to say, to themselves, who is this man who speaks such blasphemy? God is the only one who can forgive sins. Jesus knew their thoughts and, and said to them, why do you think such things? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk? I will prove to you then that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up. Pick up your bed and go home. At once the man got up in front of them all took the bed he had been lying on and went home, praising God. They were all completely amazed. Full of fear, they praised God, saying, what marvelous things we have seen today. Will you pray with me, please? For the word of God in scripture, 
for your word among us and for your word within us. We give you thanks, God. We pray that your word would be one that would take root and would live in us and change us, that we in turn might be agents of change in our communities and in this world. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. I just have a quick little chat opportunity. I promise I'm not going to make you spill your darkest secrets to your neighbor. But I'm wondering if there's a neighbor next to you, look around, make sure your neighbors have a neighbor, somebody to talk to. It's just a very quick question. If you were given a thousand bucks to buy tickets to something, to a show or a concert or a sporting event, what would you go see? And it has to be tickets for yourself. You can't be like, oh, I'm in church. I would give it away. No. What would you do? What, who would you go see? Turn to a neighbor. If there's a neighbor sitting by themselves, make sure that someone has someone to talk to. Share. Talk, talk, talk. Okay, okay, that's good, that's good. Who, uh, who, was, um, who was going to see a sporting event? That's right, who was going to see a concert, a musical, an opera, some other kind of show? Wow, we are, we are one body of many people, that is true. It was a summer of big ticket events, wasn't it? We had Taylor Swift concerts this summer, we had the Olympics, we had our good old Washington Nationals finishing not last, we hope in their league. There's a culture, maybe you consider yourself part of it, maybe you don't, but there's a culture where people will pay or will do whatever it takes to see their team play. Back in the spring, Matt and I at the last minute got to tickets to see my UNC Tar Heels lose in the ACC tournament down at the Capital One Arena. The arena was like swimming with fans, mostly UNC, not going to lie, but there were some NC State people there too. And we were taking the escalators up to the nosebleed section, and there was the legend himself, Coach Roy Williams, in his Carolina blue Argyle sweater, swarmed with people, saying, Coach, selfie, Coach, look over here. I snagged a pretty blurry picture myself, which I will keep forever, obviously. We are a culture of fans and followers, some more committed than others, but fans and followers nonetheless who have our teams, our people, our celebrities, we would love to see up close. In the story that Joy read for us this morning, there are crowds of people who would just love to see Jesus up close. Fans and followers and folks who are just curious, a whole mix, who've shown up to listen to him speak. It said Pharisees and teachers of the law had come from every village of Galilee and Judea, every village, and from Jerusalem. Jesus is a celebrity here, and people are streaming in, crowding around him. Coach, over here, coach, look this way. And into this scene, it says, come a group of men carrying a paralyzed man on a stretcher. These friends are also intent on seeing Jesus, on getting as close as possible. These friends are willing to do whatever it takes. Only it's not for an autograph or for an Instagram post. These men that Luke zooms in on are willing to do whatever it takes because they have a friend who's paralyzed, and they think, they believe, that Jesus can heal him. Now, I think it's safe to say that each person carrying the stretcher probably had his own list of things he would have asked Jesus to do for him. Healing, 
a miracle, a lift out of poverty, if you'd asked each of them what they wanted for themselves from this roaming wonder worker, surely they would have come up with something. But when it came down to it, and Jesus was in town, they decided that this moment wasn't about them as individuals, it was about their friend and his healing and his freedom. And they were going to be a team to make it happen to the best of their ability. So the team assembles. The one man who's paralyzed and a handful of friends who are not, they get together and they try to get as close as they can to Jesus. Only there are too many people also trying to get as close as they can. The crowd is like a wall and they can't break through. So what do they do? Maybe they have like a team huddle. They devise a plan, an elaborate play. I watched a lot of Ted Lasso a couple years ago. Anyone else? Or literally any sports movie where there's a big important moment and the team huddles up and they make their plan. And the thing is, in a lot of sports, we'll stick with Ted Lasso and soccer, each individual might have a small role to play, simply pass the ball to someone else or stage a distraction at another part of the field, or block an opponent, or just get out of the way, or make the assist. The shot on goal is only made by one player, and everyone else has to set aside their desire for personal glory to focus on what the team as a whole is doing. This is a lesson, even in little kids' sports, and absolutely in our faith tradition. How do we get ourselves to understand that I make a difference and my presence matters and it's not all about me. I'm part of something bigger and sometimes I give up what I want for myself in order to help that bigger thing that I'm a part of. That is the kind of generous living that Jesus invites us to. When we realize that we all have skills, And we all have resources, money and time and things that we own. And some of those resources we feel we have rightly earned, and many of those resources have just landed in our laps. But all of it is meant to be put to a use beyond ourselves. We're part of a team, part of a vision, and there are plays that we are meant to carry out together. The friends of the guy who was paralyzed, they understood that intuitively. They encounter the obstacle of the crowd, they have their huddle, and they go for the play. They get him, somehow they get themselves up on the roof of the house where Jesus is teaching. Somehow they make a hole or find an opening, and they lower him down on his stretcher into the center of the crowd, straight to Jesus. Now, usually in sports, a stretcher is used to carry an injured player off the field. But in this instance, that image is flipped on its head and the friends bring the man on the stretcher in to the center of the action. They don't just wish him well, pray for him. They give everything they have to help him get well. So the team is still on the roof. They've lowered their one friend down, but the rest of them themselves won't be able to get any closer to Jesus. They gave that chance up because what was important to their team effort is that this one guy who'd been pushed to the margins of society because of his disability is brought to the center. And the team accomplishes what they set out to do. But what happens, according to Luke, The little words in this story matter. In verse 20, it says, when Jesus saw what? When Jesus saw their faith, the faith of the friends, meaning he looked up. The sacrifice that they made to put their friend to the center could have meant that they were erased from Jesus' view, stuck up there on the roof. But no one is erased from Jesus' view, it turns out. He looked up. He saw their faith, the whole team. 
and he healed their friend. Stand up and walk. When we come together, when we center those who are often pushed to the sideline or silenced, when we pool our ideas, what could be done about this? And we pool our resources in order to, Im to implement those ideas, Jesus sees our faith. And healing happens when we don't just wish someone well, but we put in a real effort into being a team to get them one step closer to healing, more becomes possible. That's what stewardship is about. The heart of this message, this four-week series on stewardship and generosity and how we give to and through this church, is that we are invited to be part of something that's bigger than us part of a team that we don't just take one for, but we give one to. Many years ago now, the 16th anniversary of this was just marked last April, there was a softball game out on the West Coast that maybe not a lot of people were paying attention to, but for some people it really mattered. It was senior night, and the Central Washington University Wildcats we're playing the Western Oregon University Wolves for a spot in postseason play. A young woman named Sarah Tolchowski was up to bat for Western Oregon. She hit her first career home run, a three-run shot over the center field fence. It wasn't just her first home run in college. It was the first time she had ever sent a softball over the park at any level of play. So Sarah was overjoyed and she started running, but she missed first base. So she cut back to the bag, but as she did that, her right knee buckled and she tore a ligament. She fought back the pain to get to first base and she couldn't go anymore. Now softball's rules state that a runner must round the bases without any help from her teammates to be counted for a home run. If Sarah received help from her teammates or her coach or a trainer, she'd get called out. She could be subbed out for a pinch runner, but that runner would stay at first base and Sarah's big home run, her first one ever, would turn into just a single. So her coach consulted with the umpires and those were the firm rules. But then the first base player for the other team, for Central Washington, Mallory Hoffman, who herself had more career home runs than anyone else in the division, spoke up. The player's own teammates couldn't help her round the bases, but what about the opposing teammates? The umpires agreed that that would in fact be permissible. She would not be called out. So Mallory and Liz Wallace, the shortstop for Central Washington, approached Sarah and offered to carry her gently around the diamond, lowering her at each base so she could tag the bag with her uninjured leg, and then finally carrying her to home plate to the arms of her waiting teammates. Sarah was granted a home run, and her team, Western Oregon, went on to win the game 4-2. to two. Now, this is a different sort of story than one where a baseball player makes a sacrifice play so another teammate can score, or someone's own teammates help them over the finish line. This is one team making a sacrifice to help someone of another team. Mallory and Liz were willing to give one for a team that went beyond what they even imagined a team to be. And this, this is really the kind of generous living that Jesus invites us to. This is the way of Christ, the whole point of World Communion Sunday, that it's not about us, or even about our idea of who our team is. It's about a God who transcends nationalities and languages and cultures and even doctrine or particular religious practice. A God whose embrace is wide enough for all and who exceedingly rejoices every time we reach across a border, a barrier in self-giving love. 
At a speech marking the anniversary of this softball game, Sarah Tochowski recalled that day on the field and said, I share these words to encourage you to consider your impact. Impact is not always made in showcaseable moments. Impact can be seen and felt in the tiny moments and small decisions that make up our days and weeks and years. She said 16 years later, Mallory and Liz's impact has reached far beyond carrying me around the bases to complete my one and only home run. Their impact continues to live on through me and others who were inspired by their action and character that day. As we said at the beginning, we live in a culture of dedicated fans where people are willing to give a whole lot to support their team. So what happens when we expand our idea of who our team is? What is the impact then? When we realize that we are not just fans or followers of Jesus, but teammates, that we are in fact instruments of peace and loving and healing all around the world. Christ's body comes alive in the ways we carry each other. Both each other here and those who aren't here. The message of World Communion Sunday is that the team is bigger than we ever imagined, and what a gift to be part of it. What an honor to meet Christ and to meet one another at this table, a team huddle, if you will, where we get what we need to carry on the work in the season to come. Amen. Christ does, in fact, invite everyone to this table which doesn't belong to our church or to North Bethesda United Methodist Church or the Methodist Church. It belongs to God, and all people are welcome to come and receive the gifts. Today we're going to share in a big circle where we will pass the bread around to one another. And I invited um, Simon and Hilda to help lead our communion liturgy in multiple languages today. So I invite you to turn to page 15 of your hymnal. The, the prayer will be offered in French and Spanish and English. It will be clear when it is our turn to speak and what we should say. Let us pray together. The table to which, oops, this is for you. The table to which we gather is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. Es Jesucristo quien invita con su amor y su gran misericordia. Todos los que quieren vivir en paz con Dios y los prochains. Let us pray in silence. Escuchen estas buenas nuevas. We are pardoned. Nos somos liberados y renovados en Jesucristo. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Es verdaderamente digno y justo darte gracias, divino creador, hacedor de nuevos caminos. You formed us this diverse creation. Gracias a ta creativité y ta joie, y tu has dicho que c'était bien. También a nosotros y nosotras nos creaste con amor y ternura para que nosotros y nosotras seamos tu semejanza e imagen en este mundo. But we strayed from the way, O oh God. Y nos hemos olvidado a qué resemblaba tu imagen en nosotros y nos hemos detenido nuestros ojos de ti. Thanks be to you, holy God, that you do not give up on your creation. You make a way where there is no way. You lift up your servants, both men and women, and forge a new people filled with hope and purpose. Lorsque, par le péché, nous nous sommes détournés de toi, tu n'as pas cessé de te soucier de nous, mais tu as ouvert un chemin de salut pour tous les peuples. And so, con todos tus ángeles y arcángeles, avec tout être qui te sert sur la terre et dans les cieux, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dieu très saint, source de vie et de bonté, toute la création célèbre tes louanges. Dans la plénitude des temps, tu as envoyé ton Fils Jésus-Christ. Jesus, el jornalero de justicia. Jesus, the strong arm of liberation. Jesus, le voyageur qui marchait avec les méprisés et les marginalisés, avec les moqués et ceux qui n'étaient pas comptés. That same Jesus walks with us today, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, heralding the reign of God where equity is created and diversity celebrated in one holy body. Por su mensaje inclusivo, este Jesús fue traicionado, torturado y entregado a la muerte. On the night of his betrayal, se reunió con sus discípulos, hombres y mujeres, para celebrar la Pascua. Notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ prit du pain et après avoir rendu grâce, il le rompit et le donna à ses disciples en disant Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you and for the world. Do this in remembrance of me. Así también tomó la copa y dijo Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, en souvenir de ce que tu as fait pour nous en Jésus-Christ, nos ofrecemos como sacrificio santo y vivo en unión con la ofrenda de Cristo por nosotros. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit all over this place and on this bread and these cups. Haz que sean para nosotros y nosotras el cuerpo y la sangre de Cristo para que seamos ese mismo cuerpo para el mundo. So that we can be the same body for the world. Un seul corps et un seul peuple saint. Un sacrifice vivant en Jésus-Christ, notre Seigneur. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together as one people, your people, at a heavenly banquet where all are invited and all have enough. Through Jesus Christ, Avec lui et en lui, all glory and honor are yours. A ti sea toda gloria y honor por siempre. Tout honor et toute gloire, maintenant et à jamais. Amen. Amen. Y ahora, con la certeza de ser familia de Dios, oremos. Now with the assurance of being family, siblings all of God, we offer the Lord's Prayer in whatever language is closest to our heart. We pray together. Et délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent le règne, la puissance et la gloire pour les siècles des siècles. En rompant ce pain, nous partageons le corps du Christ. Pour que hay un solo pain, ainsi nous autres, siendo muchos, somos un solo cuerpo en Cristo. The bread that we break is the communion of the body of Christ. Because there is one loaf, we, though are many, are one body in Christ. La copa por la cual damos gracias es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. The cup for which we give thanks is the communion of the blood of Christ. La mesa está lista. La fête est préparée. Vengan todos. Come with joy to the table of God. I invite us now to move into a circle around the edges of the sanctuary. If you are someone who needs to remain seated, just remain seated and we will form our circle around you. Our choir will come across here and we will share in the bread and cup together.
sing now. Come to the table of Christ. We might need to come down the middle of the pews. Come to the table of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. you take it table of Christ. Come to the table of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. of joy. to partake if you have not already in the body of Christ broken for you and the cup of Christ shared for you. We take together as one people. And guessing that you have not brought your bulletin, I invite you to repeat after me this prayer after communion. Gracious God, Gracious God we, thank we thank you for this mystery in which you have given yourself for us. In the love of Christ, you make us all one. In the love of Christ, you make us all one. All who love you, all around the world not by our own doing but by your grace not by our own doing but by your grace we are one body we thank you feasting on your spirit feasting on your spirit fed by your one love fed by your one love we go as one people we go as one people to love and to serve Humbly as children in this world, for the sake of the restoration of our wholeness, for the sake of the restoration of our wholeness, in the name of Christ, amen. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. We will come and retrieve your cups as we make our way back to our seats. We'll be singing a song in English and Zulo and Simone will play it on the piano for us as we make our way to our seats so that we can get the song in our heads. It's called We Will Follow.
glad that you have come to worship to be fed and to be sent. I, <coughs> excuse me. I invite you to rise in body or spirit so we may bless one another. Picture that we're still in the circle, but we needed to come back to see our hymns. So I invite you to look to other people. Maybe you need to look behind you. It's another repeat after me this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine light toward you. The Lord shine light toward you and be gracious to you. May the Lord smile upon you. May the Lord smile upon you and give you peace. Amen. I will see you in fellowship hour as we greet our new members and go in peace.